regular agriculture, corn needs a certain amount of moisture. So we irrigate where necessary. Also, it can't have too much moisture. So we put drain valves in to keep it just the right, right amount. We keep the insects away with pesticides, etc. We, we, conventional agriculture has been very successful because it brings an ecosystem characteristics to the plants. The opposite of this is to deploy a large number of species in the ecosystem that they're naturally uh, belong to anyway, so that you don't need to take, take care of them. This is a native polyculture agriculture that co can complement the uh, very successful traditional agriculture. Farmers produce products for industry in the usual way, and uh, then service to society. So water purification, uh, carbon sequestration from the air, etc. Farmers should be compensated for each of these. This whole area started with this paper in 2006. Biofuels raised from prairies on the places that they were naturally suited to will be, all things considered, less expensive than other things for making, that was for making ethanol, but also for burning or doing other things. So uh, this was considering all things, including the cost of transportation, the cost of making the equipment, the cost of the pesticides, not including things like any dangerous things that happen from pesticides, but just the cost of everything, including the cost of the steel that goes into the tractors and the rubber that goes into the tractor cars. All that stuff considered. Prairie grass were cheaper than uh, corn. This is an experiment started in 1994. So the top soil was removed from the sandy area of Cedar Creek. And so it was just, it was just bare sand. So there was no carbon in that soil, almost none. So now we see what happened with carbon over time. The more species there were in a plot, the more biomass you got off the plot. That was ecosystem productivity. So just randomly throwing species together increases the amount of sunlight they can capture, it increases the amount of nutrients from the soil, the water from the soil, and so you get more productivity. Well, that's useful for biofuel. The other thing it does, because you have multiple rooting depths, enormous difference in nutrient loss in groundwater with multiple species. After 22 years of running this uh, the experiment of watching soil carbon. Carbon continues to build up in the soil, and the soil continues to improve after 22 years, and so you can't project an end on that. We don't know when that will level off. So what we found with biodiversity is that it increases productivity that we expected. It increases stability, year-to-year -year stability, that we didn't expect. It increases carbon sequestration in the soil. Uh, it reduces nutrient loss to groundwater. That we sort of also expected. We didn't expect that it reduced, that more species, uh, more different species reduced the susceptibility to disease. Invasion by other species was resisted when there was more, were more species already there taking up the niche spaces. And then these effects became more pronounced when carbon dioxide and nitrogen was increased. Other biofuel studies related to this that we have at Cedar Creek, where we watch water flow through the systems, and we watched it in Prairie, well, was both irrigated and not irrigated, and corn. And of course, the water went right through the corn, and it pretty much did not go through the prairie. The prairie was capturing them. And then we did a big wildlife study. This was over a thousand acres in over six years, and where we were watching harvesting of prairie for biofuel while surveying the wildlife. And we had them in 20 acre plots. We harvested them in blocks and strips and other methods. And then we surveyed for insects and Birds, and uh, amphibians and reptiles, and for mammals, that we had camera traps up for mammals. What we found after all that work is that on balance, it was good for some, less good for others, but overall, if it increased the amount of area that was available, this kind of habitat is better for us. Because doing this biofuel would increase this kind of perfect habitat compared to what's there now. What is the potential nationally? Land that can be allocated to prairie biofuel. And the bright areas are the ones that have the most land available. But then I had to take into account what is the yield. And then I integrated it over a 50 square mile radius if you want to ship it somewhere. Then I got this map. The best place for biofuel actually is right where we're standing here, in the whole country. That's so taking into account idle land available, productivity, and integrating it over the region. How could you ramp up to, you know, millions of acres? You have to do some ecological method where you say, we're going to plant this thing and then we're going to, after it gets mature, say in four years, we're going to use it for seed for the next thing. And then you can ramp up like it's a growing organism. So it becomes feeding.